Disaster occurs on frequent basis. Some we hear of, others we do not. Terrorism. Flood. Fire. A car or plane crashes. Building collapse and even armed robbery. Each bringing assets and revenue loss human mortality, and in 90% of survivors, great loss of hope. Flooding is the most common of all environment hazards, and it regularly claims over 20,000 lives per year, and adversely affects about 75 million people worldwide. Nigeria has had its fair share. Who can say where the road Emergencies, as the name implies, are not set out to happen, but they can be planned or budgeted for. Disaster management may not avert emergency threats, but it will decrease the impact of disaster where well handled. It then brings to the fore the key phases to management of disaster, mitigation, response, recovery, preparedness and prevention. Every citizen must be well acquainted with all of them. Wishing disaster away does not avert it. Rada has put in the local palace, a man of valor is only identified at a time of emergency. Let us always be prepared. Hello and welcome. It's time for another interesting package of everything music. Angelina, Angelina, you the cool in my temperature. If you call, I go come deliver. This is Stalky Movies. In times of old, the world was full of wonder. No, no, no. no. Welcoming you to your weekend for today. It's time to use our Beyond bills, six packs. Bills, 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 bills. Welcome to Gallery. Me and my parties. London for what? London for, for medicine. Medicine for what? Medicine for coffee. Are you sick, man? To our illness. <laughs> Welcome to Gist Zone. All right, my name is the Ese Lucien Wego One. Ona nyoko ko no no. I never get this kind of thing. All I hear is. Somebody called me that there is a form that people are feeling. I should go and fail. Then I went there, she gave me one, I filled the form. We are three in number, they're working together. Um, we got form from federal government. After two weeks, I received a lot of 30,000 naira from federal government. I used the 30,000 naira to buy so many things, like equipment. The money really helped me. The next week I went to market, I increased my business. I thank my president who got touched to give us this touch amount. I say may God bless him. I really thank the government, the federal government, more especially President Mohamed Bugari because he's the one that signed the money. I am very, very grateful for them. <laughs>
Good evening. Thank you very much for joining us. This is Nationwide. I'm Ruth Aguale. Five newly appointed permanent secretaries have been sworn in to fill in existing vacancies in the Federal Civil Service. The swearing-in ceremony performed by President Muhammad Buhari preceded the weekly meeting of the Federal Executive Council. Let's hear the details from State House correspondent Adam Musambu. Emerged from a rigorous screening exercise, including a written examination, ICT competency test, as well as an oral interview, the new permanent secretaries represent states where vacancies existed. They are Olushe Shong Olufunsho Adeni, Ekiti State, Marianne Ngozi Onwudiwe, Inugu, Ibrahim Yusuf Idris Katsina, Marcus Olani, Lagos, and Ibrahim Abubakar Kana, Nasarawa State. The brief swearing in ceremony, conducted in compliance with the COVID 19 safety advisory, was devoid of any presidential address. Congratulations. The head of the civil service of the Federation, Dr. Folashade Yemi Eshong, however, speaks on the government's expectations from the new appointees. The position of a permanent secretary is one that is very demanding, and so they need to put in everything. They need to be accountable to God, first of all, and then to the country, Nigeria, and to Mr. President. They also need to work with a lot of integrity the service needs a breath of fresh air of integrity. Some of the permanent secretaries spoken to by NTA News promise to live above board in discharging their responsibilities. This is um, a, an added federal touch up and they say to whom much is given, much is expected. This is the time for us as uh, federal permanent secretaries to work assiduously to support the government, especially Mr. President, in his quest to us uh, actually getting Nigeria to the next level and ensuring that we provide what is best to the people of Nigeria. I've worked all these years in the federal civil service from 1992 to date and there's been all service to the nation and I'm not sure I'm going to stop what I have been doing. Instead the challenge is more and I'm going to face it with all due diligence and then sure that I deliver to the people of Nigeria what they expect from government. What will Nigerians expect from you as permanent secretary? An efficient service delivered with fear of Almighty Allah. We'll do our best to support the government to execute its programs. Loyalty to the president, to the country, to make sure we help him to implement his programs. We have got a lot of experience with civil service, so, and it's a very good thing to be appointed to the top echelon of the civil service. So what we should do is to hit the ground running. So I'm sure all my colleagues are going to hit the ground running. I'm going to support every effort of the president, so I at least make sure that we do all our best. The permanent secretaries were appointed from the various eligible directors in the federal ministries, departments and agencies. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. President Muhammad Buhari will on Thursday lay the foundation stone of the Kanu Abuja sector of the Lagos Kanu Railway Modernization Project. A statement by the senior special assistant to the president of media and publicity, Garwa Shiu, indicates that the Lagos Kanu Rail Project is part of the 25-year vision approved by the federal government for the rail transportation in 2002. The contract for it was signed on 30 October 2002 and assigned to a Chinese company on October 22, 2009. The Chinese company and the Federal Ministry of Transportation signed a supplementary agreement for the implementation of the Abuja Kaduna segment, which was completed, commissioned and put to use by the Buhari administration. Meanwhile, the Kanu Kaduna Standard Gauge Railway will improve mobility in the country as well as ensure seamless movement of passengers and fret trains on the Lagos Kanu rail link, the statement added. President Muhammad Buhari says his administration is ready to use everything within its powers to end insecurity in the country and bring perpetrators of criminal activities to book. The president, who spoke at a dinner on Tuesday with the 469 members of the National Assembly held at the State House Conference Center, Abuja, said insecurity manifesting as insurgencies, banditry, kidnapping, and urban crime of all sorts is the single most difficult challenge the country is facing. State House correspondent Gideon Ifadi reports. 
There is so much to celebrate by the executive and the legislature, but for the irate of insecurity, which President Muhammad Ubari is expressing concern that insecurity had inhibited government's ability to build infrastructure, provide the much needed social services to the people, and to attract investment that drive innovation, create industries, and provide jobs and create wealth. As the president says, some of the people who perpetuate these various manifestations of insecurity do so for profit, others in the name of discredited ideologies. I congratulate you all and thank you for your contributions to the difficult yet necessary task of nation building. It is our collective fate to have come into office at a time of significant challenges for our country. Overcoming these challenges require that we finally confront long ignored questions of economics, politics, law and history that are often at the root of our national problems. President Muhammad Ubari held the Ninth National Assembly for discharging their legislative duties with maturity and competence, describing the legislature as full partners in national development. The president particularly commends the minority parties in the legislature for their cooperation and support for government programs. This moment in history requires us to make hard choices, take difficult decisions, and act with diligence and patriotism to ensure that our country can survive and thrive long after we have all left. What this means in effect is that our jobs will not get any easier. However, the objectives we seek and will work together to achieve deserve our best efforts, regardless the sacrifice. We are prepared to receive the 2022 appropriation bill at the end of September by the grace of God. Ours is to continue with that our commitment of ensuring that we work on whatever is submitted to us, that we scrutinize and conduct all the necessary legislative duties to ensure that our scarce resources are properly targeted and prudently utilized. I believe before we go on Thursday, the electoral, we'll have a new electoral act. And in a new year, we intend to bequeath the country a constitutional amendment that is worthy of the name amendment, which hopefully will go beyond tinkering at the edges and bringing us substantial change in Nigeria. None of our many achievements would have been possible, Mr. President, save that you cooperated with us and saw us as partners in progress. The President said he looked forward to continued collaboration and partnership between the executive and legislative arms of government, working together to achieve a shared vision of a peaceful and prosperous country. From the banquet hall of the State House, GD Onifade, NT News. And more from the legislative side, Senate has reaffirmed its commitment towards ensuring that the consideration of the Electoral Act Amendment Bill will be considered with national interest in focus. President of the Senate, Ahmad Lawan, was speaking when the Senate Committee on the Independent National Electoral Commission laid its report on the Electoral Act Amendment Bill. He explained that all senators are free to pursue their convictions on the provisions of the bill through legitimate legislative process as the report is scheduled to be considered Thursday this week. Some of those accusing the leadership of the National Assembly are misinformed, innocent. Some are simply mischievous and rebel rousers. This is the first time this report is led here. And therefore, whatever 
will be discussed or considered about the Electoral Act Amendment Bill will be on the basis of what has been presented to the Senate here. If anybody feels very strongly about anything, lobby distinguished senators to canvas for your position rather than blackmail uh, leadership. In another development, Senator Sadiq Umar drew the attention of the Senate to the recent death of six members of a family in Kwara State, which he said was alleged to have been caused by the consumption of a particular kind of macaroni imported into the country. And in the Green Chambers, the House of Representatives is set to consider and adopt the report on the Electoral Act amendment bill. The report was laid during plenary Wednesday by the chairman of the House Committee on Electoral Matters, Representative Aisha Duku. House Speaker Femi Bajabiamila had this week again reassured Nigerians that the Electoral Act amendment bill will be passed by the House before the annual legislative break commencing after Thursday's sitting of July 15, 2021. The bill titled A Bill for an Act to Repeal and Reenact the Electoral Act 2021 seeking to further improve the regulation and conduct of federal state and the federal capital territory elections has been a subject of speculation in the public domain. Well, following global health challenges, Nigeria cannot afford to ignore the importance of establishing additional health institutions. Speaker House of Representatives Femi Bajabiamila stated this at a public hearing on five bills seeking to establish additional health institutions in the country. Let's hear more from Dayo Ugunshala. The bills include the one for an act to establish Federal Medical Center, Fufu, in Kwara State, a bill to establish Federal College of Nursing and Midwifery, Otu Jeremy, in Delta State, a bill for an act to establish Federal Medical Center, Ogoja, Cross River State, a bill to establish National Hospital Port Accord, and the other seeking amendment to accommodate Federal Orthopedic Hospital, Asare, in Bruno State. Stakeholders expressed optimism that once legal framework is put in place, it is almost certain that the proposed health institutions are achievable. The bill, when passed to law, will not only provide ease and quick ability to health care delivery to the people of immediate host community and environment, but to Nigeria as a whole. I want to support the bill for the establishment of Federal Medical Center in Fufu, and that is the message from the entire community of Iloni. This hospital is established in Azere for North State. The whole of the Northeast geopolitical zone will have this specialized service. The establishment of the Federal College of Nursing and Midwifery at Totu Jeremy will be highly appreciated. There are a lot of health-related issues emanating from the exploration of oil and gas in River State. There is need for National Hospital Port Harcourt. In all, the committee gave assurances that input taking will be accommodated in the final draft. From the National Assembly, Dayo Gunshola, NTA News. The policy thrust of the present administration in fighting corruption and all the sharp practices to stand still is galvanizing more support for the objectives to be met. Akin Fadei Foundation is one of the frontline organizations that is determined to deliver on this mandate through the massive deployment of media platforms as tools for changing the narrative. Abubakar Usman Kwanga reports. The only message that may be seen to have sunk in the hearts of many leaders of thought here is the passion visible with the foundation to initiate a paradigm shift in fighting a common enemy that has plagued the nation's general well-being for so long. We hope to see a largely corrupt free Nigerian society thriving in all facets of governance where the rule of law takes the pride of place 
what they have done over the last three years is certainly one of the ways in which we can involve the general public in this worthy cause that all of us uh, should be focusing on and fighting as well. So we are very excited at the foundation. Now the more than 10 years conceived idea with three years sustainable implementation of the anti-corruption manual is gradually answering questions on how to defeat the monster. Drivers of critical sectors and agencies gave in-depth perspectives to the menace and agreed that the success in the fight against the hydra-headed monster requires the cooperation of all and sundry. I'm a Muslim. If I accuse somebody who is a, like Azu, who is a Christian, of corruption, nobody looks at the merit of what I've said. It requires a multi-sectoral approach. It requires a coordinated approach. The conversation here may just be a continuous effort to promote strategies and reinvent the wheel for tackling the monster through partnership with the Foundation for a Corrupt, Free and Safe Society. In Abuja, Abubakar Usman Akwanga, NTA News. A board has been set up to work out a research template for police officers at the National Institute of Police Studies and other security institutes. Inspector General of Police Usman Al Khali Baba stated this when course participants of the institute visited the force headquarters in Abuja. Francis Fum reports. Senior security officers from the police forces of Nigeria and Sierra Leone and directors from the National Institute of Police Studies made up a 51-man study team. First time Sierra Leone police is participating and what brought the team to meet the police chief, not far-fetched, the strategies needed in policing a diverse society. I also want to urge you to research on issues that will be beneficial to you and to the system. This is not going to be the end of the course you are going to undergo, but it will also prepare you for other strategic studies, whether in the Defense College. The main focus of NIPS is to develop leaders that will successfully lead others to conduct themselves in a professional manner while providing effective and efficient service to the general public. In another development, Cross River State Governor Professor Ben Ayade was at the Lewis Edet House to see the IGP on how they can form a common front in sustaining peace in the state. Cross River State remains calm in spite of the heat that engulfed the southern part of Nigeria with full internal laboroscopy. Cross River State have witnessed so much peace as a result of his presence as the Inspector General of Police. And thanks for the great team we have in Cross River State. The Commission of Police very effective and has been on ground. And I want to really commend you for the great work in Cross River State. Francis from NTA News. Ogun State Police Command says henceforth parents or guidance of students caught for hooliganism or the breach of public peace in the state will be arrested and prosecuted for their children's criminal actions. The command gave the warning against the backdrop of alleged killing of two secondary school students in Ogun State after an, after an illegal inter-school gambling competition that turned vicious. Yemi Dalemo reports. Clash occurred when students of one of the secondary schools involved in the gambling competition invaded the other school to avenge the alleged killing of their mates, who they claimed were stabbed to death. The clash was said to have caused pandemonium in the state capital as teachers, students, and members of the public in the neighborhood had to run for safety as weapons like guns, cutlasses, Charms, among others, were allegedly used by the students. Reacting to the incident, Ogun State Police Command says the command will no longer condone illegalism and breach of peace and orderliness both in schools and other public places. We have been going from school to school. All our DPOs have been deployed to go to, from school to school to, to warn them, to tell them the consequences of their actions. And that the juvenile does not mean that they cannot be punished. That, that like I've said earlier on, we have juvenile courts. And why we are arresting the, the children, we, the parents too, will be, will be made to face the music. Ogun State Government says no student was killed in the clash, as claimed by the students, and that prompt action has been taken to forestall future reoccurrence. We are also working on incorporating some security tips into the curriculum so that as teachers, teachers teach them, Students are also taking on board some security tips. Also, the security uh, tips for 
all stakeholders in the education sector. We are working with the uh, Nigeria Police, we are working with uh, uh, NSCDC to see how we do this. Normalcy has since returned to the affected schools in Abelkuta, Yemidalimo. NT News. Nigeria's commitment to the promotion and protection of human rights has been captured in a book presentation in Abuja. Omenka Marichuku reports that this comes against the background of the Universal Periodic Review, a mechanism of Human Rights Council through which all member states of the United Nations are peer-reviewed on their commitment to promote and protect human rights. The Universal Periodic Review is a human rights promotion and protection system of the United Nations General Assembly that came into existence through resolution. The review is to assess the commitments of members of the state to their international human rights obligation. If it is on this premise that the book Dialectics of Rights, Nigerians' Engagement with the Universal Periodic Review seeks to ensure Nigerian Straight Times Engagement Human rights generally is under the SIST committee, and that is a very important committee in the UN. We are glad today that Nigeria is no longer a pariah state. You will agree with me that the implementation stage is the most important stage of the UPR process. It gauges the efficiency of the UPR process to improve human rights situation. It is also the period when the states reviewed ought to put into place measures it has accepted. For the author, Dr. Uchenna Emiloye, and the book reviewer, Eze Onyekwere, the book is a veritable platform for implementation of recommendations from other states, emanating from Universal Periodic Review. This work, in my view, uh, will present a good, um, good programmatic guidance for for human rights work in Nigeria. The work is written in easy to understand, free-flowing English language. The book will also serve in enhancing state's capacity and providing technical assistance with the consent of the state concerned. In Abuja, Umeka Marachuku, NTA News. The Supreme Court has granted an interim order stopping the implementation of the new revenue allocation for the disputed oil fields between Imo and River State, pending the determination of a substantive suit filed before it in June this year. This order followed an ex parte motion filed by the River State Government. Femi Okewo reports. There had been a long-standing dispute between Imo and River State on the boundary demarcation and ownership of the Acre and Mbede oil fields. Pending the full resolution of that dispute, a 50-50 sharing formula was adopted for the revenue accruing for the wells to the two states. The interim order, which was taken ex parte by the Supreme Court and in chambers, is to restrain the federal government and its agencies from departing from the current 50-50 sharing formula applied to Rivers and Imo State in respect of the revenue which the oil fields have been providing. Because it was an ex parte motion filed by the River State government, only the River State officials were in court. We disagreed and came to the Supreme Court because our suit is here. The proceedings are before the court and we brought an ex parte application asking the court to disapprove of that practice by Imo state government. And happily today, the court has upheld the rule of law. This interim order given by the Supreme Court paves way for all the parties to this dispute to put up their processes for the hearing of the substantive matter which begins to come up at the Supreme Court on the 21st of September. From the Supreme Court, Femi Okewu, NTN News. All right, Lagos will be our first stop and Michael Lale is set to guide us. Michael. Thank you, Ruth. The initiative of the federal government to promote advanced technology and the development of human capital has given rise to the use of blockchain technology and artificial intelligence in providing solutions to industrial and environmental challenges. Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Adeni Adebayo, stated this at the inauguration of an electric 
Viku Power Charging Station in Lagos. Abola Di Salami reports. As the world evolves with the introduction of new technology, characterized by robotics and artificial intelligence, Nigeria is not taking a back seat in our quest to be identified as an innovative, creative and research-based country. Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Adini Adebayo said, the strategic transition from fossil fuel to pure electric power will help reduce environmental pollution with its attendant emission of carbon dioxide. It will offer students first-hand experience with the latest innovations in mobility and renewable power technology. It is strategized to be an effective platform for focused research and development into even more applicable vehicle electrification solutions for Nigeria and Africa. The need to provide a veritable platform for the youth to unleash their technical know-how and innovation with special focus on automotive technology, stakeholders agreed, will all bring about an improvement in the solar power electric vehicle charging stations across the country. Electric vehicles are not just the future, they are the now. Uh, the whole world is moving towards transitioning from fossil fuel to uh, clean energy powered vehicles, renewable energy. Uh, so such a transportation solution needs sustainable power. We understand that the opportunities are in renewable energy. So what better way than to leverage that sustainable energy to power these uh, 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 transportation solutions. As the country rates itself among nations of the world with an assembled electric vehicle to actively protect the environment through zero emission vehicles, industry players are calling for an effective monitoring of the solar powered vehicle charging stations. In Lagos, Abolari Salami, NTA News. The controller, Lagos State Command of the Nigeria Immigration Service, Bochi Aliu, says surveillance capacity to check the influx of migrants will be stepped up to prevent the spread of deadly COVID-19 variants across Lagos State. Musa Toliat reports that the controller made the pledge when he paid a courtesy visit on Governor Babajide Sonwolu in Lagos. As Lagos State Government comes to terms with the reality that a third wave of the COVID-19 variant is now in circulation, collaborative efforts aimed at checking the spread of the pandemic is a welcome development. This is why the visit by the Controller of Immigration in Lagos State has given hope in a quest to ensure that inbound passengers do not bring more variants of COVID-19 into the country. The issue of irregular migration has come up as a recurring decimal, as a response by immigration service, we have made proposal on a more public exercise. We have already mapped out areas of interest. So this kind of operation will involve huge logistics. In this regard, we have made a proposal through the secretary to the government, which uh, we hope it will receive the required attention. Governor Bawajide Sawolu promised to work with Nigerian Immigration Service by providing logistics to support their efforts to contain the rate of transmission in the state. We need to work together. You are the gate, you are the gatekeeper. You are the goalpost that can work with our frontline health workers and our port health authority workers to ensure that uh, people that are coming in, you know, obey our rules, conform with our COVID protocols and nobody is above the law. The governor charged the Nigerian Immigration Service to work with frontline responders stationed at points of entry across the state to ensure inbound travelers adhere to lay down COVID-19 protocols. In Lagos, Musa Toliad, NTA News. Time now for some messages and when we return, Nationwide continues from just with Felicia. Please stay. Youths are about the greatest assets the country has at the moment. It is therefore not surprising that the administration of President Mahmoud Buhari is strategically responding to the yearnings of the youth through multiple projects and programs. Youth Entrepreneurship Support, yes, by Bank of Industry, the Youth Investment Fund by the CBN, and several other conditional cash transfer programs. Recruitment of 774,000 social workers, majority of whom are youths, and so many other projects that are beneficial to youths directly or indirectly. If the administration can do all this, definitely with a degree of 
patience and time, it can achieve more. Nigerian youths must come together to say no to terrorism, no to vandalism, and no to all disruptive tendencies. Hashtag Youth for Greater Nigeria, pacifying the youths, unifying the nation. Dear compatriots, our country can be as great as we want. Let us all commit ourselves to its greatness. We must be willing to set aside our differences, unite and stay as one. In our expansive landmass, human and material resources and plurality lies our strength. Let our challenges lead us to rediscover our common ground and together let's find solutions. This will take some time, so it requires patience, tolerance, and forgiveness from every one of us. Let all hands come on deck to protect and transform our country. Let us unite and see each other, not as adversaries, but as brothers and sisters. Together, we can build a better Nigeria for ourselves and for the next generations. This message is brought to you by the National Orientation Agency, NOA, with support from Nigerian Television Authority, NTA. The future belongs to those who leverage on digital innovations. Digital PS International presents Digitest Online 2021, an online summer camp that brings ages 8 to 18 together across Nigeria, Canada, US and more countries. Team Digital Skills Pathway to Prosperity, date 8 to 16 August 2021. At Digitest, kids and teens will unearth their potential to create digital products with possibilities of making profits online. Participation would be virtual with few physical non-residential at the Digitest Center Center Abuja and we all enjoy a level playing field to compete with students across the globe. Lots of prizes to be won. Give your kids an opportunity of a lifetime today for only 5,000 Naira for virtual and 20,000 Naira for physical. To register, visit our website at www.digitalpeers.org slash digitest online 2021. Or call 080-7782-3307 or 080-7782-3308. The broadcast media ecosystem is dynamic and requires continuous training for practitioners to perform optimally. NTA TV College Joss invites relevant officers to the following specially packaged training programs. Basic directing techniques, date 2nd August to 27th August 2021, four weeks. New technologies. Optical fiber, IP technologies, automation storage management and wireless technology. Date 9th August to 13th August 2021, one week. Transmitter operation and maintenance. Date 23rd August to 27th August 2021, one week. Advanced broadcast accounting and auditing. Date 30th August to 24th September 2021, four weeks. Emotional intelligence for workplace efficiency. Date 6th September to 17th September 2021, two weeks. The course fee for the four-week course is 100,000 Naira per participant. The fee for the two-week course is 80,000 Naira, while the course fee for the one-week course is 60,000 Naira only. Accommodation inclusive. The venue for all courses is the serene and secure environment of NTA TV College near Old Government House, Rayfield, Joss. For more inquiries, please call 0803-079-5335 or 0806-980-9807. NTA TV College, Joss. Training you to be the best you want to be. Thank you for staying tuned and welcome to JOS. Governor Simon Lalong has warned those in the habit of doctoring their retirement age and blocking chances for the younger ones to be employed in the civil service to desist forthwith or face the full weight of the law. The governor sounded this warning in JOS during the swearing-in of some appointees. Sada to Mohamed Kafa reports. The appointees are chairman of the Plateau State Civil Service Commission, State Independent Electoral Commission, House of Assembly Commission, as well as Disabilities Rights Commission. Others are chairman of Plateau State Board of Internal Revenue Service and Auditor General of the state. Governor Lalong says 
Based on the current realities, his administration is adopting new measures that will enable it to deliver services and is devising ways of saving costs and opening up doors for the younger ones to be engaged in service and will therefore not tolerate fraudulent-minded people. Like you said, we'll be relying on you to deploy the best of your skills, techniques and experiences to track down bus workers and other fraudulent staff who have over the years tampered with their records to perpetually remain in service. Chairman of the Civil Service Commission, Luca Fuanil, spoke on behalf of the appointees with a pledge to work diligently and to inject new ideas that will drive the development process of the state. We pledge to put in our very best. We also pledge your excellency that uh, with God on our side, that we will not be disappointed. Some of the appointees were selected to fill existing vacancies occasioned by the demise of previous holders of those offices, while others were newly appointed or reappointed in JOS. Saada Tumamad Kafa, NTA News. The new general officer commanding Free Division Nigerian Army, Major General Ibrahim Salau Ali, has asked officers in the division to ensure teamwork and professionalism in their duties. He stated this in JOS while taking over from the former GOC, Brigadier General Bello Abdullahi Mohammed. Ndeyan Andeyabegyang has details. While taking over from the former GOC, the Three Division, Major General Ibrahim Salou Ali expressed appreciation to the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahaya, for finding him worthy to serve the division. He called for teamwork, positive attitude to duties, and professionalism to move the division to greater height. Whatever that will be achieved by the GOC, it's not come from you guys, it is you that will make it. Major job, you don't do it alone. It's always team effort. So I'll be expecting you to please. I just want to add the word please. Give me your best. The way you have given your cooperation and worked with our going GOC, I expect you to also do the same for me. Major General Ibrahim Salo Ali is the 41st GOC. Three Division Nigerian Army. Until his appointment, he was the director of policy at the Army headquarters in Jaws, in Denyan, and the Abadyang, NTA News. And that's it from Jaws. More reports with Ruth in Abuja. Thank you very much, Felicia. As a result of its commitment and efforts at fulfilling the pledges made at a global compact on refugees forum held in Switzerland in 2019, President Muhammad Buhari's administration has been described as refugee friendly. Now, this was buttressed when course participants of the Advanced Security Management from the Institute of Security Studies paid a cutsy visit on the Federal Commissioner for Refugee, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons, Imam Suleiman Ibrahim in Abuja. Thomas Ogbetere reports. The need for interagency collaborations and synergy with other organizations geared towards fulfilling the statutory responsibility of the Commission towards coordinating all migration and development of all related activities aimed at ensuring the welfare of refugees, migrants, and internally displaced persons were some of the reasons for the courtesy visit. We're embarking on economic um, empowerment programs to ensure that persons of concerns are stable so that they don't fall prey to the criminal minds. And for the criminal minds, I would like to advise them to stay clear of vulnerable people because we're here to protect them, and we'll protect them, and we'll hold everybody accountable. The Federal Commissioner of National Commission for Refugees, Migrants, and Internally Displaced Persons says the federal government, through the commission, is committed towards the protection and assistance of refugees, asylum seekers, returnees, and internally displaced persons. Therefore, the commission is ever ready to collaborate with stakeholders on programs that will empower and integrate them into the communities. Various skills, various sector, we partner with various government agencies and international organizations to ensure that we provide that. 
The very recent one is a project Reliance is a collaboration between the Commission and CBN who have signed an MOU. So, so far we have captured 125,000 people. The Federal Commissioner also called for a synergy among humanitarian actors geared towards upgrading resettlement cities and digitization of the Commission's operations. In Abuja, Thomas Ugbeteri, NTA News. The Nigerian ambassador to Russia, Abdullahi Shehu Yibekwal, has presented copies of his letters of credence to the Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Russian Federation, Sajay Vershinin, at a brief ceremony in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Russia. The ambassador, who was received by the Deputy Minister in Company of the Director, Department of Africa, in the Russian Foreign Ministry, the Nigerian ambassador thanked the Russian government for their support to Nigeria and reiterated the need to sustain and deepen the mutual warm relations between both countries. For the deputy minister, Nigeria remains one of the big and important countries in Africa with whom Russia has maintained cordial and mutually beneficial relationship over the years. Similarly, the Nigerian ambassador and head of mission to the Gabonese Republic, Ambassador Raymond Brown, has presented his letter of credence to the president of Gabonese Republic, Ali Bongo Odimba. Ambassador Brown said the Gabonese president, having received his letters, an exchange of pleasantries, informed that Nigeria and Gabon have a lot of work to do in the areas of fighting insecurity in the Gulf of Guinea, piracy, fight against terrorism and Boko Haram, and further broadened the relations between both countries. President Ali Bongo says he would like both countries work in synergy since they play important roles in their respective regions. He enjoined members of his cabinet to give the Nigerian ambassador maximum support. All right, let's head to Patakot. Doris is already waiting. She has the next set of reports. Good evening, Roots, and welcome to Port Harcourt. As the rainy season sets in, emphasis has been placed on proper hygiene and proper environmental sanitation to prevent illnesses during this rainy season. Ejoma Ugeke x ray the causes and prevention of illnesses associated with rainy season. Malaria, typhoid, tuberculosis, pneumonia, and other respiratory tract infections are some of the illnesses associated with the rainy season. Following the humidity of the atmosphere, bushy grasses and stagnant water in most environments, experts say the chances of creating breeding ground for mosquitoes and carriers of these illnesses abound. There should be provision for good water to the people. And as I said, it's a collective responsibility. We should also help ourselves. Now, we shouldn't shift our burden of expertise, assessment, management, evaluation on COVID-19 alone. Because other conditions are killing. HIV is killing on daily basis. Then malaria is killing on daily basis. As the rainy season increases the chances of illnesses, the need for adequate sensitization on routine hygiene, ventilated and clean environment from government and other health providers has been stressed. Wearing her hand glove, covering her hair, even her legs too. I always wear her thick clothes and cover her very well. So in that times, no cold can even come near her. Experts have advised that people should desist from self-medication and seek medical attention when they notice any sign of ill health. In Port Harcourt, Ijomu Gweke, NTA News. Citizens' involvement in electioneering process begins with having the permanent voters' card, and this called for all stakeholders to be engaged in enlightenment and mobilization of eligible voters and relevant government agencies to step up their games. Clement Barico reports on the online registration situation in New York, Aquaibon State, period to the physical biometrics capturing. 
The pre-registration statistics by the Independent National Electoral Commission shows that Akwabom State recorded 3,632 enrollees for the online voter registration two weeks after the commencement of the exercise, although very commendable compared to figures from some states of the Federation, some residents said Akwabom State ought to have surpassed the 3,000 figure if the relevant state government agencies were carrying out the needed enlightenment, particularly in rural communities. We, we are not always uh, working ahead of time. We wait until the 11th hour. The 11 hour rush is always the, the, the worst. That is why our people are always disenfranchised. There should be sensitization. So you get everybody involved in the mobilization process. But it is not enough for you to sit online and register. You know, there is still capturing. That is actually the real registration. The online voter registration exercise is to reduce crowd at various INEC offices pending the commencement of physical biometric capturing expected to begin on July 19 in Uyo, Clement Barakui, NTA News. That's our beat from Port Harcourt Nationwide continues after the break with Salamatu in Kaduna. Your kids are smart. Your kids are creative. Your kids are business savvy. Now they get a chance to prove it and maybe even start their own business. The goal of the Emerging Africa competition is to raise a new breed of industrialists. Upload a video of your child pitching a business idea or showcasing an existing business to get a chance to enter the three-week boot camp where final winners will emerge. Admission is free. Age range is 10 to 17 years. Entry is open June 28, 2021 and ends July 17, 2021. Bootcamp opens August 8 and ends August 28, 2021. For more information, visit our website www.tacompetition.org, our Facebook page, TA Competition, our Instagram, The Emerging Africa. For inquiries and sponsorship, call 0803-545-8855 or 0817-678-8284. A new edition of TV Guide is out exclusively with Governor Simon Lalong of Plateau State. Since assuming office, our rescue administration has pursued the path of peace and reconciliation and restored confidence among people of different ethnic, religious and political persuasions. Peace is back on the plateau. We are building world-class infrastructure in roads, schools, hospitals, water, energy and opening up opportunities for innovation, entrepreneurship and job creation for thousands of our youth through quality education. The edition is a compendium of mind-blowing stories for your reading pleasure ranging from entertainment, economy, sports, media, politics, family and lots more. Pick up a copy and keep abreast with issues and trending features within our space. TV Guide, very incisive, very educative and comprehensive. Grab a copy at the vendor near you or any NTA station nationwide. TV Guide, your indispensable companion. My advice to the younger generation is that they should learn from what we have started and what we have left. I did things that ordinarily I should not have been doing. What that meant was that I was working hard. Whatever assignment you are given in life, put in your best. The military years were a disaster. Smoldering effects of all that is what we are trying to cure. This is Nationwide, and you're welcome to Kaduna. 
Kaduna State Government has inaugurated a seven-man judicial commission of inquiry to investigate the actions of the Nigerian Labor Congress during its warning strike over the racism policy of the state government. Muhammad Umarajinge reports. Among the mandate of the commission is to gather facts and documented evidences on actions of the Nigerian Labor Congress during the strike that halted economic activities, including cutting off power supply to residents. The state governor asked the commission to be fair and just to all parties. Give us factual and legal recommendations as to actions that the federal government as well as the state government may need to take to ensure that no state in Nigeria, uh, in particular the people of Kaduna State, do not have to go through what they went through. We must be seen to rise to that very great expectation from us. The Commission expects submissions from security agencies and health experts to examine implications of such strike at a time the state government is restricting public gatherings to prevent the spread of COVID-19 and any security breach. The commission is given 60 days after its first sitting to submit its final report. From the government house Kaduna, I am Muhammad Umarajingi, NTA News. Now to a breakthrough. The Mechanical Engineering Department of Ahmad Bello University, Zaria, is leading a breakthrough in liquid waste management system using locally sourced materials to tackle water pollution and land degradation. This innovation, Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Otumba Adebayo Adeni, in a message says will ensure safer water bodies for both human and animal consumption in addition to promoting agricultural purposes. Tina Toro has the details. With Moringa Olisara as key ingredient, the liquid waste management system was born out of the need to fight environmental pollution and land degradation due to oil spill and other industrial waste, which affect aquatic life, bringing about reduction in arable land mass and making portable water inaccessible to some Nigerians, especially in oil producing regions. Kojilan we use is from uh, biosource, that is Moringa seed powder. Instead of using chemicals to treat the water, we also treat it with biological uh, materials, and that is a unique feature. And this is deployed to the industries or to uh, oil and gas companies. We know that this, this will definitely reduce the rate of contaminant flow. Even the uh, motorcycle repairs, the vehicle repair, when you go to their places, what do you see? A smeared environment. So that has contaminated the soil. So products like this are capable of remediating the soil. Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Otumba Adebayo Adeni, who was represented, described the innovation as a welcome development. The federal government at all levels is committed to drive initiatives of industrialization and diversification as articulated in the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan. Stakeholders agree that consolidating on this innovation will create jobs and turn around the economic fortunes of the country. In Zaria, Tina Toro, NTA News. And Tina Toro's report completes our package from here. Ruth, over to you. Thank you, Salama, too. All right, let's talk sports. We hear it's getting tougher in second African mini football nations, COP 2024.